If you thought health talk was all boring and doctors were pretty much as sterile as the instruments they used, then you have not met my guest tonight, Dr. Zoran Bekvarovsky. Zoran, great to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. This is a fascinating man. Now, let me tell you why. Zoran's been in a very, very special position, arguably. He stood over me while I was unconscious with a throat, with a knife to my throat. Now, do you know how many women out there have wanted to be in that very, very special position? One I'm thinking of, particularly at the moment. So let's, let's start by talking tonsils. Now, let me explain for our viewers exactly how I first met you. I had a situation where I had horrendous tonsillized for years, literally since I was a child. It got worse in adulthood to the point where I went through a stage where I literally, I couldn't breathe. I thought one day I was going to die. And I ended up in hospital on, on drips with penicillin flowing through me in an absolute mess. End of stories, I had an adult tonsillectomy. Soren was my surgeon and we've been talking tonsils ever since. Let's talk tonsils with kids. Now, for, for years, they didn't take them out. That was basically the, the thinking of the time, wasn't it? Right. Well, first of all, we need to clarify sure. what are tonsils. And when we talk about tonsils, we're talking about a whole lot of tissue in the back of the throat. So if I were to show you on a diagram, right here, basically, we, when we look inside someone's mouth, there are two lumps on the sides of the back of the throat. They're basically collections of blood cells, white blood cells, which we commonly refer to as the tonsils. But there's a whole lot of other tonsillar tissue in the back of the throat. So the ones we're talking about tonight and we'll be speaking about in children and so on are the palatine tonsils. They're tonsils in the back of the throat. When we look inside someone's mouth, on the sides, there and there. However, there are other tonsils in the back of the throat, such as the lingual tonsils in, in the back of the tongue. There are tonsils in the back of the nose called the adenoids. I thought you had one set of tonsils. The and ones you can see in your throat. No, there's a whole lot of other tonsil tissue in the back of the throat. There's a world of tonsils in the throat. So if we're looking in someone's mouth from the side, there's going to be a blue tack that I used to show the children. That's the tonsils in the back of the throat. They're the common, they're the palatine tonsils. So whenever we're referring to tonsils tonight or in the future, we're referring to these tonsils here called the palatine tonsils. Are they the ones you took out of me? Correct. Okay. Now there's other tonsils in the back of the tongue called a lingual tonsil. There's a Latin word for lingual meaning tongue, so lingual tonsils. And there are the adenoids. And this is what parents are often confused about. What are the adenoids? Adenoids are tonsils in the back of the nose. At your age, they would have shrunken away, so there's nothing to remove. In yeah, children, 25. they're 25. <laughs> and in children, they're still there. So these are adenoids in the back of the nose, and they can sometimes block off the nose, breathing. They can block, block off the ear, so there's ear infections, and we can talk about ear infections in a little while. So, so do, they, do they block infections getting into your throat? Okay, well, that's the other question, obviously, about tonsils. What are tonsils? Tonsils are what I've just described, but what's their function? Well, tonsils are a, a, a collection of blood vessels, sorry, blood cells, white blood cells in the back of the throat. Then there's debate about it. Even t till this day, there's various uh, schools of thought on what tonsils are and what they do. Uh, basically, there's three main theories or uh, functions of the tonsils that, that, are that are discussed. One is that they trap germs. Uh, that, that being bacteria and viruses. The second one is that they actually filter, and actually, uh, when they trap the germs, they actually make, uh, they kill the bugs and stop them from getting in and causing problems. And the third one, which is, which is probably the more important one, is that they actually are samplers. They actually sample the environment, and when the bugs come inside the mouth, they'll make antibodies to, to fight those bugs. Now, the bit about the infection, there's some schools of thought that say that the, 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 the uh, trapping the infection and killing the germs is more important at the age from zero to one year old. And then as you get older, then there's decreased uh, need and the decreased role of the tonsils in that function. Why do we say this? Well, when we take the tonsils out, there's no studies that's ever been proven that you get more infections. Oh, so, so I thought that's why you avoid having them out as an adult, because then infection's going to get into your system. So that's an urban myth, basically. It's actually completely the full circle opposite. That is, um, if the tonsils are there and not causing any problems, we can leave them alone. On the flip side, if they've got recurrent infection, recurrent infection, sometimes the bugs actually get trapped in the tonsil and it causes recurrent infections. That's what happened with me. Precisely. Or they can get little caves, little crypts, and they trap the bugs inside them and the scar gets scarred and so on and so on until actually the tonsils themselves become sick and then we need to remove the tonsils out to prevent further use of antibiotics and infections and the complication of tonsillitis. I mean, basically, you can get an abscess next to the tonsil, you can get a neck abscess from tonsils, and so on and so on and so on. So this business about, you said, the, the, do we take out tonsils anymore in 2010 versus it years ago? Between 1900 and 1960, all the big tonsils were removed between 1960 and, 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 and later in the 70s and 80s. So hang on, we're removing too much tonsils. Let's think about removing tonsils. And now we're actually taking out tonsils for three main reasons. 
One is infection, recurrent infection. Two is sleep apnea or sleep disorder breathing. We'll talk about it in a second. And the other one is obviously cancers. That's uncommon in children, obviously. Now, it's interesting that in 2010, we're looking at possibly the more things change, the more they stay the same. That's a famous proverb, a French proverb from, uh, from Alphonse uh, Carr in, in, in 1808. Surgeon, philosopher, so, musician, we'll get onto that later. So pro probably this might come full circle that we're learning now, if you do get big tonsils, they are causing problems. And the sort of problems they're causing is sleep disorder, breathing and sleep apnea. Um, and, and again, we might come around full circle. And that's my, one of our predictions in the future. We'll be talking about, hey, look, if they're big, they're probably causing problems and they probably, sh probably should be removed. Probably but, should be removed. But, but Zoran, I actually spoke to specialists who said to me, whatever you do, don't get your tonsils out as an adult. That an adult tonsillectomy is a big operation. It's dangerous. Avoid it at all costs. And I've got to say, since you took my tonsils out, the quality of my life has improved enormously. You, you, you couldn't put a figure on it. You really couldn't. Because my health has improved enormously. <laughs> Welcome back, Australia. You're watching Mark, My Words with Mark Barbaluk, that's me, and my special guest tonight, Dr. Zoran Bekvorovsky. Now, before the break, Dr. Zoran was show, telling some fascinating things about tonsillitis and how basically for years tonsils weren't taken out. Like in my case, I had an adult ton tonsillectomy, which was amazing, honestly. It was painless. I don't know whether you just You're very filled kind. me full of drugs, You're honestly. But I didn't suffer any of the problems that I thought I was going to suffer having an adult tonsillectomy, and I was truly terrified. So the fluid builds up in that middle ear and cause the problems we're talking about. So how do you get rid of it, sorry? That fluid, uh, one second. No, no, no. You can see it on Short here. Session. I hope you can see it on here. That's a normal eardrum. Now, if you look along here, you'll see the bubbles of fluid there. That's glue ear, that's fluid in the ear. Now, the good thing about this, and the question you just asked me is, 80% of the time, the fluid goes away by itself. So either with, um, with sprays, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, with antibiotics, all of the above. If the fluid doesn't go away, then the fluid needs to be drained, and we'll talk about that in one moment. Now, the first thing, these are some sprays. These are basically some salt water sprays. It's as simple as salt water spray. We use salt water spray. If the nose builds up rubbish and clags and so on, uh, we use salt water spray. It's important to use the spray properly, and this is why I brought these along. So when we're using the spray, the spray bottle, actually the nozzle, I'll show this on me, the nozzle needs to go in as far as possible. So about that far, not just a bit of a squirt and go. Mm. So we use these sorts of sprays in the nose, and we... According to the doctor's recommendations, we use the, the this is a flow saline. It's a spray. It's got no preservatives. It's a brand spanking new one. It's got no preservatives in it, and that's a good thing about this spray here. Okay. There's a baby version of it too, because if you if you've got a baby lying flat, you turn it upside down, it doesn't work. Okay. Whereas this one is actually a, a version where you can actually turn it upside down, actually spray it away, such as and, and get some saline to the nose. So that's one of the first things we do. This washes any mucus in the nose away, clears the nasal cavity that way. Then what we do, we use a cortisone-based spray. You've got to have a balloon that you blow up with the nose, such as this. You've got, you've got this, right? Are you going to make something out of this, like a now, dog or something like that? No. Now, actually, both my ears are popping at the moment. While, while really? While oh, yeah. Well, both my ears oh, because popping. it changes the pressure it in the station tube? Push air up through the nose, up the station tube, into my middle ears. Welcome back to the close of the show. Wasn't Zoran Bekforowski an absolutely fascinating man? Like, honestly, it's amazing the people you meet in your daily travels and, and what you find out about them. Squeeze box player, surgeon, probably saver of my life and all sorts of things. Absolutely fascinating.